Hi everyone, my name is Neil Griffin, and today we're going to be reviewing Gulp JS. Gulp is a build tool similar to Grunt, and we'll be covering the installation, setup, and use of some really common tasks with Gulp throughout this screencast. What help you'll find is that Gulp is really quick to set up. It can save you a ton of time in automating a lot of very repetitive tasks in your development workflow, and can even speed your development process up. So let's get into it. We'll head over to the terminal. We'll create a new directory, in this case, learning gulp, and we'll change directory into it. First thing we'll do here is create a new node project using the npm init tool. And I'll accept all of the default suggestions from that tool. Now let's install gulp. For these types of build tools, which I'll use across many node projects, installing globally makes a lot of sense. We'll then install gulp into our project directly. Gulp is installed. Let's try it out real quick by simply typing gulp at our command prompt. Excellent, it says no gulp file found. Let's go ahead and create one. We'll simply use touch gulpfile.js and rerun gulp. This is one of those things that makes gulp so great, which is the amount of help it gives you when something hasn't been configured correctly. So now we know that we need a default task, and that makes sense. Gulp is basically a series of tasks, and without any task, there is no real purpose for it. So let's give it a very simple task to do. Let's open up the gulp file, and step one is to require gulp. Then let's make a function call to gulp.task. This function call takes a string literal as its first argument, and a function as its second argument. The string literal will be the name of the task, and the function will be the task we want to have run. Since we're keeping this simple, we'll just log something out to the console. In this case, I have configured a gulp file. Excellent, let's save this and then we'll switch back over to the command line and rerun Gulp. We're up and running. Congratulations, you've successfully installed and configured your first Gulp file. Now logging things to the console is fun, but let's get some real work done. One of the more common things you'll see is the automatic conversion of SASS files, or SAS. For now, let's create a very basic SAS file with a main.scss extension. We'll add some SAS code to this file. In this case, we're just going to define a variable, and we'll then use that variable as the color for our body tag. Now, I could convert this into a valid CSS document simply by using the SAS command line tool, which I happen to have installed by running that main.css gets created and the variable replacement happens automatically. However, I really don't want to have to remember to run the command on every change to my CSS file. That is where gulp comes in. So let's configure gulp to run this automatically. First, we'll need to install gulp-ruby-sass. The Ruby should serve as a reminder that sass is built in Ruby and you'll need to have Ruby installed for sass to work. Awesome. Now let's head back over to our basic gulp file and configure this as a task. First, we'll require SAS. Now our task here will look similar to the default task, but let's create a new task. This one will be called process styles. And for this task, we're going to set a source document. We'll do that by telling gulp to return gulp.src and then creating a function chain using dot pipe. The dot pipe here references gulp.js's methodology of using nodes streams in order to process these files. And what we're doing is streaming a single file through these processors in order to get the result that we want. Now, we'll need one more thing to make gulp work here. We need to specify a destination. And to do that, we'll specify another pipe. The dot here to the argument just referencing the current directory. Okay, we've typed everything out correctly. Let's head back over to the command line and type gulp process styles. The argument here will tell gulp which task we would like to run. And excellent, gulp is now configured to automatically run SAS on our CSS style sheets. We can take a look at main.css file and we can see that it automatically does the translation. Just to prove that that worked, I'll trash that main.css file and we'll go ahead and we'll rerun the gulp task. Excellent, you can see that it's created it again. 
Now, creating folders for SAS files and resulting CSS files in the root directory of our application is a really bad idea. So let's go ahead and fix that, and we'll speed through these next couple things really quickly. I'll create a source and a styles folder with inside source, and I'll create a destination and a styles folder with inside destination. And we'll change our directory structure so that's a little bit more manageable. And we retested it, and it all works. Let's configure an auto prefixer to also process our CSS files. First, we'll do npm install gulp auto prefix. -er. Excellent. Now let's configure our gulp file to use it. And here we're going to chain another pipe command. But first, we need to actually require our auto prefixer. Once we've required it, we can add the additional pipe command. Here we're going to use .pipe. And there are many other options available for auto prefixer. In this case, we'll just use last two version. But I'll leave those up to you to research if you need any more browser specific prefixes. Now let's make an edit to our source main.scss file. And in this case, we are going to add a transition transform to a links. Once we've saved that, we can go back and rerun the task. And you can see that the auto prefixer automatically added the WebKit transition. Great, now our gulp file is really starting to do a lot of work for us. Let's take one more step and minify our CSS. Let's install the node package responsible for minifying CSS. Excellent. Now that that is installed, let's head back into Sublime and configure it to use it. Again, we'll require the minify CSS. And once we've done that, we'll create another pipe command to actually use minify CSS. And once it's good, we'll save it, head back over to the terminal, and rerun the gulp task. Excellent. Now we can see that our CSS file has been minified. However, convention around the web is to create both a minified and non-minified version. So let's follow that convention and do that now. We'll need the rename gulp task for that. So let's head to terminal and install that. Now we require the rename task, and we'll need to do a quick reorganization of our code to first output the main.css file, then do a rename and minification, and then output a main.min.css file. Excellent. Let's save this file, and we'll head back over to the terminal, and we'll rerun our gulp task. And it completed successfully. And now we can see we have both a minified version, and actually in this case both are minified. We'll have to go and actually cut that uh, old statement out. Once we cut that old minify statement out, we can rerun the gulp task, switch back over, and now we have our main.css and our minified main.css. All right, enough with the darn processing of CSS files already. Let's take a minute to look at doing something similar for JavaScript files. Now, one of the most common processing steps with JavaScript files is simply concatenating them and uglifying them. To start, we'll need two JavaScript files. This time, I'll start off by creating them in their own subdirectory, so I won't have to move them there later. Again, we'll be a little bit boring here and simply create a JavaScript file that prints something out to the console. Easy enough. We'll just log out Hendrick, and we'll create another file that logs out Neil. Let's just run both of those, making sure that they both work the way we expect them to. And they do. Perfect. Easy enough. Let's first work towards concatenation, and to do that, we'll need the gulp concat task. So let's install it. 
Excellent, it's been installed. Now let's head back over to our gulp file, but this time I'm actually gonna start by creating a new task. In this case, I'm gonna call gulp task, and we're gonna do process scripts. And again, we're going to pass in a function, and we're gonna return a gulp.src. So this is gonna be a little bit different here. Instead of actually specifying a single file, we'll use a file glob that tells gulp to pull in any files within a specific directory that have the JS extension. We'll then pipe those through the concat task, telling concat we'd like the final name to be main.js. And of course, before we're done, we need to give it a destination folder of where it needs to be copied to. And we'll run gulp process scripts. Ah, looks like I got an error. Um, that's because I forgot to require the concat library, which we just installed. Once I've done that, we can rerun, and it's been successful. Let's take a look and see what our scripts have. Excellent, now we can see that both of those JavaScript files have been concatenated into a single file, which is exactly what we want. The next step is now to uglify that consolidated JavaScript file. Let's install the gulp uglify task. Excellent, now that that's been installed, we can go back to our gulp file and configure our gulp file to use it. First again, we'll require it. We don't wanna forget about it like we did last time. And we'll configure the, our process scripts task to actually use it. We'll do a quick rename as we did before to dot min as is the custom, and we'll uglify and then specify the same destination. and you can see that it's been uglified. Again, we'll do the exact same thing that we did before following standard convention. We'll create both a minified and non-minified version of that main.js file. In this case, we're going to do the exact same process we did for main.css by renaming it with a suffix after the destination line. We'll then copy and paste the uglify statement underneath that excuse me, cut and paste, and then we'll create another destination document to the another destination pipe to the same directory. And that will create both main.js and main.min.js. Excellent, it was successful. Let's take a look. There's our main file and that has been uglified. Lastly, we'll touch on one last thing, which is the watcher, which is to say we'd like to set up Gulp so that it automatically watches the files we've defined and auto runs whenever those files are changed. We'd like to set up Gulp to watch for any changes in our JavaScript files. We start with a new Gulp task, which we'll call watch, and then we'll add a gulp.watch function that takes the file glob we'd like to watch, and then an array of tasks to run upon their change. Once those are configured, we'll, we'll run Gulp Watch, and Gulp will now sit and wait for any changes to those files. We'll need to open up a new terminal window here to show how this works. And we'll navigate to the directory where our JavaScript files are, and then we'll touch script1.js. And we can see that when we do, the gulp watch process over in the other terminal window automatically reruns that specific gulp task. Pretty cool, that's exactly what we want. Let's repeat that for scripts, script2.js, and make sure that it works, and it does. We can come back over and we can see that it ran again. Okay, so in this tutorial, we've covered installing gulp, installing some of the very most common gulp tasks, We've outlined how to configure your gulp file and even touched on some good directory file structure for your application. We've used the SAS processor, auto prefixer, minifier, concatenator, uglify and rename tasks, which are some of the most important. And we've even looked at how to set up a watcher for certain files. Thanks very much and we'll see you soon.